Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're finally going to get to the review of Red Goblin number one. I actually had people write me and say, dude, you got to check this out. You're not going to believe the last page. You're going to love it. And I'm like, really? From Red Goblin? Because I was kind of willing to skip this series, to be honest with you. But then when I heard more about it, and then when someone said, look, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but pick it up, check out the last page, or read it in order so you can be surprised by the last page, I was glad I did. So this book is by Alex Pecknadel and John Basaldua, uh, and I'm, I'm Basaldua, and hopefully I'm I'm not butchering it too bad, but I'm sure I am butchering both your names, but I'm very sorry. So there are their names there. Very talented because I actually really liked this issue. And before I get into it, I do have a digital code for this issue. So let's give that out right here. Bam, first person to go to that website, put in that code, is going to get a copy of Red Goblin number one. And uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are if you get it. Let it be known in the comments below and share your review of this book down there. Spoilers and all. And I'm going to get into some spoilers here. Definitely the last page I'm going to spoil. So heads up for that uh, because I'm very excited. That's the whole reason I wanted to make this video is because of the last page. Um, but I'll try to skip a couple beats and I encourage you to please go buy this book for yourself uh, because it is actually really, it was really good. I liked it a lot. Um, so first we had Normie and starts off. They did a great job recapping everything that's happened you know, with Normie and, uh, and his relationship to Dylan and his friendship, and then be, you know, him getting this symbiote sliver from Dylan after Dylan kind of purged it of its wickedness, I guess you could say. So it is not a symbiote sliver that is connected to Null or knows about the void or anything like that. It is a purely clean, the first purely clean symbiote post, or uh, birth post uh, Null's death, I guess. Um, so it makes this symbiote very unique. And Normie has named it Rascal, which is very funny because my dog here, Ace, when I rescued him, that was the name he had at the shelter, was Rascal. Uh, and so over a year ago. So I'm like, that's wild. So Normie has a pet named Rascal um, and now his best friend because they start uh, bonding in this, but they don't bond like Carnage bonds with, you know, Cletus, where it's on a cellu cellular level. I always have problems saying that. Um, and then, or, or like Venom, where it's like a host kind of thing. Like they are their own entities like they can talk to each other but it's more like out external you know where they're talking to each other um and so uh, it's pretty neat because they're both kind of learning they're both children in a way and i kind of dug that you know like toxin is an already established symbiote attached to a kid right now who his dad works for the jury and that's a cool story and uh, hopefully they do more with that during the summer of symbiotes um or even in this book i think that'd be cool for dylan to team up with that kid in this book but this is a different dynamic because it's an actual juvenile symbiote in a way that has no connection to the greater uh, world of symbiotes. So it's kind of unique. So the story starts off and you actually have the Goblin Nation have returned. Um, and that's a, a group that Norman Osborn obviously built up at one point where he was making like his own gang of goblin people. And they, uh, they now are operating solo without Norman because now he's more of a good guy or trying to be a good guy. And so now the Goblin Nation is out there and Normie shows up to interact with them and try to stop them, but they get away. Uh, and then Normie actually breaks uh, because he's weakened from the battle because they use like electricity. One of the guys has like electric powers. Um, they end up breaking into a, a bodega and eating a bunch of chocolate. So that's the one thing is what I like about the symbiote is that it's kind of like Eddie's symbiote in the movies, the Venom movies. It's like that version of Venom where it sees like a bunch of chocolate and it's like, oh yeah, get us some chocolate, get us some chocolate. And so there's some fun instances with the, the symbiote with that going on. While, you know, Normie's trying to stop the bad guys, the symbiote's kind of like, hey man, let's, let's eat some chocolate, <laughs> you know? So I, I kind of like that. It adds a fun dynamic to the book. And I think it adds uh, something unique to Normie, who his instinct is to snap back at people and be very clever and be act almost older than himself in a way because he's you know like a 10 year old kid or something like that but he's like he says things that adults say and it's because he's been raised like that he's an osborne so i kind of like that because at first i was like man he talks to adult but i'm like you know that makes sense for normie that actually absolutely makes sense for normie dylan i can understand a little bit of independence from him because he grew up like in an abusive home i guess with eddie's father um didn't have his mother around so i can understand him having a, a survival intelligence but Normie has like a adult conversation intelligence. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. I, I like that the writers actually explored that in this. Um, so they, you know, they go through Normie's memories. He's got a half brother that he hangs out with now. He feels a little jealous of because that kid pretty much when he gets in trouble, he gets anything he wants. Whereas Normie gets like a scold talking to. 
And I think that's because his parents feel responsible. Like Liz is worried that Normie might grow up to be like Norman um, in some way. And Norman also is concerned that Normie might grow up to be like him. So, uh, so that dynamic there is really, really cool. And you can see Liz not wanting to fight her son when he talks back to her because she's afraid that'll just instigate him to be more like Norman. And then you see Norman actually trying to be more patient with him as well. And it works out. It actually is a really neat story. I found this to be, I was engaged through the whole thing. Um, but then we have the appearance of who is in charge of the Goblin Nation. And it's this hooded figure here. And you're like, well, who is this? Who is putting together this group knowing that it was going to get the attention of Norman Osborn? And they believe that the Red Goblin, when it showed up to fight some of their men in the beginning, that Norman sent the Red Goblin because this person is like, look, I know Norman Osborn and I know he was the Red Goblin. So you're like, how does this person know? Who is this? You know, who could, who could it be? And he, you know, this, this person's like, or he, I could say he, uh, this person is like, uh, Hey, I, I'm going to, I'm going to send my men out now to get Norman. He's going to do a big speech at this new facility he's opening and we're going to cap capture him and bring him here and lure his red goblin assassin to us. And then we'll kill both of them. And so that's the, the plan of this, uh, you know, this new, uh, leader of the goblin nation. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, you have Normie and the symbiote rascal kind of arguing with each other. I love this. The symbiote grabs him and hangs him upside down. And he just goes calmly like, put me down now. I just, I love their relationship. They're doing a really good job with it so far in this book. I mean, to establish all this in one issue is pretty amazing. And what I really, really loved, this really was awesome. The, the thing that Norman Osborn is speaking at, he's given a speech. He's opening a new facility called the Harold Osborn Addiction Treatment Center. Now, this is amazing because Osborn has dealt with addiction before. Harry has done with addiction before. And Osborn, even Norman at one point, uh, knew that Flash Thompson struggled with alcohol addiction and still took him from his wheelchair, put him in a truck, made him, forced him to drink a bunch of alcohol and wreck the truck into a school. Um, so this topic of addiction and hurting and self-hurting and hurting others, like it's so interesting to see Norman go, I'm going to open a center to help not just people like my son and others that our family has affected over the years and people just in general that, you know, are struggling with their own addictions, you know, and, and also for me, like I think I need a place to go when I struggle and that's what this is. And it's built in Harry's name. And I thought that was so awesome. I, I don't know whose idea that was, whether that was editorial or Alex's, but I thought that was a really cool moment for Norman because I'm obviously struggling to deal with him as someone who's trying to do the right thing. This genuinely felt like the right thing. And I was blown away by it. Unless we find out there's like a, a secret goblin headquarters underneath it. <laughs> so far, this seems like a really nice thing that he's done. So Anyway, while he's at this event, that's when the Goblin Nation show up and they take him down and they capture him. Uh, there's a lot of battle going on. I don't want to go through every beat of the story, obviously, but they bring him back to their king, you know, the new person in charge of the Goblin Nation. So here's a big spoiler. So if you don't want it, turn it off now. Go pick up this book yourself. Read it for yourself because I'm telling you, for at least for me, it was a it was I'm massively excited to see where this story goes. Uh, I was already digging the book in general, but to see this twist at the end, I'm so happy now and I cannot wait to see where this goes because this is returning one of my all-time favorite 90s characters uh, from Marvel Comics uh, along with the Slingers who I love and every time they come back I, I get excited but same with this character. So spoiler alert, here it is. I'm giving it away now. This is the return of Philip Urich, the good guy goblin from the 90s who over the past few years turned into a villainous hobgoblin uh, who I've cosplayed as when he was hobgoblin. I built the wings and everything and I had them move. I had a mask where the mouth moved and I won first place in the costume contest. Like I love this character so much uh, that I dressed up as him and I'm not typically a cosplaying person. So uh, so this is so exciting for me. I can't wait to see where this book goes. I'm very pumped. I, I'm unfamiliar with pretty much everyone who worked on this book, I believe. I think I've seen the artist work a couple times before, Jan's. But um, but Alex's writing, I I I'm th I think this is my first exposure to Alex, and man oh man, what a start! Uh, if you're out there watching this video somehow, amazing job! I really am locked in for a character I really never cared about too much, the the Goblin Child Normie thing. Like ah, I never really I didn't really dig it as much. Thought it was kind of a goofy gimmicky thing during the uh, the Dan Slot run. But this pulling it back and making me give a crap and then bringing in characters that I really love and doing them justice 
and giving Norman that really heartfelt moment, I was just, I'm blown away. <laughs> so I'm glad I, that Eddie's Mullet and other people told me to pick up this book. And I'm glad no one spoiled it for me because this was rock solid awesome. And I highly recommend you pick it up for yourself. And if you did read it, let me know what you think down below. If you won the free copy, let me know what you thought down below as well. And we will definitely be covering the series as it comes out. I don't know if I'll do a episode on each issue, but maybe I'll wait for a couple issues to build up from here on out and we'll do, we'll cover them, you know, two or three at a time. But at least for the start of this, what an awesome, because first issues are very hard to write and uh, you got to pack a lot of information in, you got to set up the threat, you got to do a lot of things. And this did a really good job of it. So I'm very excited to see where it goes. And uh, hopefully some of you agree with me. If not, let me know down below. And if so, let me know down below. We'll keep talking spoilers down there. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And some episodes we have coming up will be the Venom DLC from Midnight Suns. I will start playing that hopefully this weekend and start uploading those videos. I'll play it over on Twitch. And then after a couple days, I'll probably edit them down and upload them as Venom vlog episodes so you guys can see what the hubbub was if you missed it live. But yeah, I'm gonna do it live and I'll probably have the headset on as long as my voice and everything sounds pretty good. Uh, I think I'm feeling better now, so I think I can do it soon. So I'll try to talk and, and give commentary over these episodes and I'll upload them here as Venom Vlog episodes very soon. Thanks so much, see you in the future, peace.